Well, g'day and uh, welcome back to the shop. Uh, recently, it was the Melbourne Cup long weekend here down in Melbourne, and uh, I decided to get off my backside and uh, do a little job. And as you know, I've been working on this tool and cutter grinder for quite some time now, and it was time to uh, extract the digit, pull the phalange from the gluteus maximus, and uh, get to bloody work. So, once it was completed, I needed a little job just to test out my tool and cutter grinder, so I thought I'd make these little mini clamps. Now, the little mini clamp is a job that um, we usually do in the high school system with the engineering program and it's a good little job for high school students uh, to introduce them to the milling machine, um, you know, get, get them uh, au fait with the milling machine and also to get on the lathe, to, you know, make a thread, make, a, make the clamp foot and do a little bit of knurling. So I thought it would be a good little job here to, to show you today on my uh, Aaron Engineering channel and, uh, and to test out the tool and cutter grinder. What you'll need to make this job today, you'll need obviously some uh, bright mild steel and uh, the bright mild steel that I'm using here is actually uh, 10 millimetres thick, it's uh, 50 millimetres wide so you just buy it in, it's, um, you know, it's got these lovely square corners so it's really good to work with. It's a little bit hard on the tools, um, you can cut it with uh, high speed steel uh, end mills, however I tend to use the carbide end mills when I'm doing this on the milling machine. and. Uh, the total length is 65 millimetres. Now from preparing the raw stock, uh, the first way to attack this would be, well, the way I did it, was to uh, get it down to length. And uh, the length had to be 65 millimetres, so in the mill you go and uh, leave a little bit of overhang, drop in over the side, and um, you can see here we're pretty much on the money. We're not that far off, 0.04 of a mil. So drop over the side and clean up these ends here. All right. Uh, the next operation was to attain the datum point. So the datum that I set for this job was this back corner here on the right hand side. Usually we always set the left, but um, especially when I'm CNC milling, but I set this one on the right hand side so I came in and did all my work from this operation here. Now the milling operation, so after you bring it down to length, you start on the pocket area, and I was roughly taking, I think depth of cut was about uh, two and a half mil, and uh, being careful, you know, taking, uh, I think it was about 30 to 40% step over, depending on which way I was going. If I was climb cutting, I'd only be taking 20% engagement or a little bit less, but if I was conventional milling, I was taking the full 40% of the cutter. So if that, I think I was using a 10 millimeter carbide, um, cutter, so that's you know 40% is you know four mil step over, which works good for my mill because one full turn of the handle on my milling machine is four millimeters. Now, once uh, coming into depth, now I to digress for a second, I think the better way to do this would be obviously to remove a lot of material first by drilling a series of holes, uh, cut, cutting it out with a hacksaw or a bandsaw, uh, and snapping out that section, and that would save you a lot of time. Uh, however, I didn't feel like hacksawing it out because I'm a lazy bastard, so I just milled it all out with my end, with my end mill. Now I did get some chatter coming into the corners here of the G clamp, of the mini clamp, and that's because the cutter was coming in and taking full engagement, okay? And we're on a manual milling machine, it, it's not usually a good way to do it because you induce chatter, and the chatter is induced predominantly due to the backlash, okay, in the X and Y um, axes. Uh, with a CNC machine, of course, uh, I would have probably come down a cutter. So after pocketing all that out, if I attacked it via a CNC machining process, I would have then popped in with an 8mm cutter and done a full contour clean up on that and I would not get any chatter in the corners. I could probably do it with a 10mm as well and not get any chatters and that's predominantly because the CNC has pretty much to zero to you know, very minimal backlash. Uh, you're running linear rails, you're running ball screws, and you're running servo motors with, you know, uh, encoders that talk back to the to the thing. But anyway, this is a, a manual machining uh, YouTube channel, so let's not talk about CNC too much. Alrighty, so once I was happy with that and popped it all out, I then set it up to do this unequal chamfer here in the milling machine. And this unequal chamfer, I think it's 10 millimeters down from the datum, and 15 millimeters across from memory, okay? And the finish, the finish size of this, it ends up being 15 millimeters wide, okay? Um, and so therefore, you have a good opening here to clamp some stuff. Now you won't clamp big stuff with it, but it's handy. So yeah, I've got 
what, what's that, 35 mil, 34 and a half, something like that. Yeah, 30, you should get about 35 millimeters from memory of opening in here, all right? Now, when making the actual clamping section here, I thought I'd be a cheeky bugger and uh, I thought I'd try out my new um, carbide threading tool that I bought from Live Tools recently, uh, which is, you know, one mil pitch. And I set it up in the lathe and I did all the machining operation here and then I thought, okay, I'll come in and thread that in the lathe. Now, I ran into a problem. Now, my Colchester, she's a big old girl. Um, she's not really good on small parts because the live center I've got is massive, um, which means to hold this to thread it, um, the live center was in the way, so I couldn't come back in and cut there, okay? The other thing is my brake on my machine really needs to be replaced, and if I jump on the brake, the machine doesn't stop dead, you know, when I, when I want to. The other problem, we usually when I thread, I usually come in with a parting tool and make a little run out section. And that allows the threading tool to drop into the run out section, jump on the brake, remove it and reverse it. Now, first time I threaded with the Colchester and my Colchester is an Imperial machine. It's not a metric machine and therefore it cannot, it will cut a metric thread, but whatever you do, if you disengage the half nut, it won't start in the same position again. And to prove my point, here's a test piece that I did, and it, it looks like a good thread, but what eventually happened, it started a little bit out of sync each time. Even though I brought the die wall back in at exact pr precise point, uh, this thread uh, became a thread no more. And it looks good, but it's absolutely crap. And uh, if I, I don't have a, micro, a microscope here to show you, but it's actually like, it's actually like a 16 start thread or something like that. It was ever so slightly off each time and there's hardly any thread on there. So trap for young players, isn't it? Yeah, bloody Imperial machines, God damn it. Anyway, um, so to thread in my Colchester, it will cut a one mil pitch. However, once the half nut is engaged, you cannot disengage it. You need to actually reverse out the machine. Now that was fine, I was cutting some really nice threads, but when I got down nearly to the full depth, and, and now I'm, I was using a full, full forming thread insert, and because I could not support this end, I was getting deflection, okay? And come hell or high water, I ended up you know, trying it three times and I could not cut, it was too small. So I cheated in the end, guys, and I have to admit, I went back to a long bolt um, and then just machined and knurled this little head and, lock, and uh, threaded it, screwed that on, Loctited it and, and tightened it up so it's not gonna come loose with red Loctite. And that's pretty much done there. So I'm a little bit disappointed in myself that I couldn't thread that to you. It's the, you know, usually I would have just used the die head and run the die over it. Um, what I probably need to invest in is a, a Coventry die head, which would be lovely for my little Colchester. Uh, but anyway, these things have to wait. Now to make the foot today, uh, when making the foot for this little mini clamp here, pardon my crude drawing, um, this is Aaron CAD 101. Yeah, ugly as hell, I just roughly sketched this now. All right, so what I should have done with this foot section here, I should have put a chamfer on here to make it look a bit more, you know, make it look a little bit more uh, aesthetically pleasing for the eye. Um, so this is a, a very, very rough hand-drawn sketch sectional view. So you can see my threaded rod up here, pardon the crudeness of this. Um, now, this actually gets machined down and it pops down through the foot. Now you may ask yourself, well, how, how did the big fella get that foot on there? How come it's not coming off? There's no screw on it or anything like that. And that's a little, that's a little trick uh, an old fitter and turner showed me many, many years ago. He was actually my head of department at another high school that I used to work at, uh, uh, John Heitbaum. He was a very, very good tradesman. And he taught me a lot of things while I was there, I have to admit. And what we did here, so we machined this uh, little section down on this threaded rod here. And then we pop in on the inside with a, a very tiny center drill. I can't remember what size that is. It's either a, uh, it's, I think it's a number three. I'm not too sure. Number three or five, my eyes are going on me. And you wouldn't believe it, I broke my bloody glasses uh, when doing this job and I've got my second pair on and they're not the best. But anyway, I popped in with this little center drill up its backside. Okay, and then once you assemble it, guys, you put it together and you use a small ball bearing. 
in here and as you tighten it the ball bearing mushrooms over this end and that captures that foot on there and it will not come off okay now if you wanted to get it off I suppose you could just unwind it and put a fair bit of pressure on it and it eventually it would peel that back out okay I don't know you'd probably damage the thread on the way out so once she's on, she's on. And uh, you've got to be careful that you don't over tighten it with the ball bearing. The ball bearing will also give you a slight indentation in the bottom of the clamp, which is not to worry. Okay, and um, look, to be honest, I'm quite happy with it. But more so now, before you do the assembly is when you need to surface grind it, okay? So I'm really, really happy with my tool and cutter grinder. Um, it's a, it's an, it's been branded Herless, okay, so, which is, uh, Hurlis was a machine company here in Australia that was originally built up by a um, Hafco, you know, here in Forbes. And uh, which is sad really, because Hurlis was a much better company to deal with, if you, if you ask my opinion. And uh, anyway, it's, uh, look, it's got the wrong wheel on my grinder. I don't have the, I don't have a wheel guard over it and I don't have the, it's, it's, it's obviously got a grinding wheel on it, okay? And it's too fat and I can't fit the washer on. And that's, so I'm using it the way it came. I've got a, a grinding wheel on order for it. I've been talking to my old mate, the wizard, uh, who's, uh, and of course, Lionel, my good uh, friend over in Vietnam, and who's given me some ideas on what wheel to buy for general purpose grinding. Um, I have not done much grinding in my trade life, okay? Uh, apart from offhand grinding or angle grinding, I've done very, very little machine grinding. Um, done a little bit of surface grinding, but that's about it, and especially uh, valve grinding. I've, Regrinding valves and that sort of thing in the automotive trade, which I previously previously used to be in. All right, so when I surface ground this, I'm quite happy with the with the appearance. And uh, Lionel said to me a good thing. He goes, "Look, you know, obviously you, my machine can run coolant. My coolant tank's got a big hole in it, so I couldn't run coolant." Uh, Peter the Wizard said, "Look, just put a plastic bucket in it. Don't worry about repairing the tank. You're better off with a plastic bucket anyway. Find one that fits. So that's a good idea. Thanks, Peter." Um, but Lionel said, look, just, just spray a little bit of WD-40 on it, okay? And uh, the first one I did what didn't have WD-40 on it, but the second one did, okay? And that's, I came up a much better finish. Uh, the other thing is to, you know, to, you've got to take light cuts with the surface grinder. It's not a milling machine, um, and uh, which is quite sad, really. I was hoping to take a quarter-inch cut with it. That's a joke. But look, overall, I think my I've got them nearly nearly to the same height. I probably should have surface ground them together, but I hadn't finished that one yet. I'd made one and I quickly wanted to surface grind it and then I made the second one. And I think I'm 0.01 millimeter out in thickness, which is not bad, you know, for a Humpty Dumpty like me. All right, so when I whack this on here, okay, so I've got there 9.86. And then when I check this one here, I think that's 9.87. Yeah, it is 9.87. So I'm not far off, you know, point, point 0.01 of the milk. Jesus, you know, piece of paper is 0.1. So it's not bad for a little home machine shop anyway. So you're welcome to the plants for free. Um, by all means, I'll put the URL links down here in the description area of the video. And uh, I'll have the 3D, 3D model files there as well. So there'll be a PDF plan which will be 2D. Um, there'll be the 3D Fusion 360 file, and if you like, I'll put the step file in there in case you're using a different CAD system, whether you're using SolidWorks or, I'm not, I'm not sure, I don't know much about Onshape. I know Emma and a few other people use Onshape. Have a look at that. You may be able to bring your, the step file into Onshape, but I'm not too sure about that. Alrighty, look, thanks for following guys and uh, look, really appreciate your support on the Aaron Engineering channel and thank you and uh, by, by all means, have a crack at this, mate. One, um, you, may, you may be new to the milling machine, you want a little project, uh, you know, to sharpen and hone your skills and I think this is a great little project. It's got some really good processes in it and they're nice little clamps now that I can have near the milling machine if I want to clamp something up or whatever, all right? Thanks again for following along and I'll see you on the next video. Okay, bye-bye.